I hope you haven't forgotten about figured base because we're actually going to talk about that right now. Uh, just as a quick reminder, remember that the figured base 5-3 indicates a chord in root position. However, oftentimes, pretty much all the time, uh, you will not see 5-3. You'll just see a blank space underneath the chord. And that indicates that it's a chord in root position. Um, if there's a 6-3 underneath the chord, that is uh, indication that the chord is in first inversion. But again, um, you don't usually see 6-3, you simply see the number 6. And that indicates that it's a chord in first inversion. And finally, the figured base 6-4 indicates a chord that's in second inversion. All right. So, how can we use this with our Roman numeral analysis? Well, if a chord is inverted, then we need a way to describe it. So, <clears throat> Let's see how that works here. Now, if we just look at this first chord and leave it as it is, uh, the, the base note is C, and therefore it's in root position. So you would just write the Roman numeral normally. Um, just write the Roman numeral, don't have to add anything to it. Now let's change this next chord just a little bit, and instead of having an F in the base, let's put an A. Now, since A is in the base, that means it's in first inversion. Simply, put a 6 next to the Roman numeral. That's all you have to do. And that tells you that it's a 4 chord, but it's in first inversion. Likewise, let's change this chord, and let's put a D in the base. Okay? Since D is now in the base, that means that it's in second inversion. Very simple. Again, all you have to do is write the Roman numeral, and then put 6, 4 next to it. And that tells you that it's a 5 chord in second inversion. Easy enough. Do a little bit of practice with this, and uh, I'll see you in the next lesson in just a second.